Yep, my bookshelf's still a mess. Hi everyone, it's Lindsay from the vlog Books for Christian Girls, and today's video is still talking about unhauling and rereading and all of that stuff that was a continuation of my last video, which I'll link up there. So, if you've just clicked on this video and you're wondering, Lindsay, why in the world is your bookshelf missing books? Well, that's because I challenged myself in the last video to pull off about 100 books, 107 to be exact, uh, books I want to reread and see if I want to keep or unhaul. So, I also pulled off a good stack and placed them up there of books I'm keeping. So, that's, that's why there's more holes. But yeah, it's a, there's a lot of holes and you can't even see them all on camera right now. But yes i did that i have been trying to read i feel like i've knocked out more than what any other video of this wrap up will pr not wrap up of this reading reread a thought whatever we're calling this i feel like i've probably read more books in this video time period than any future one for this kind of thing so if that made any sense at all, let's just go ahead and get started. I do want to point out, and nobody, okay, number one, nobody commented on my shirt last time. I thought my shirt was hilariously appropriate for the video, but okay. And then secondly, I also said that maybe I'm only missing like two shelves, a shelf, like a full shelf. Yeah, I, I, I was delusional in that comment because obviously it's more. Like this shelf really didn't get touched too bad. It's not that bad, but each one is missing, like, that much. So, books keep falling, too, so you know there's that. So, I think it's probably more like three to four shelves, but you know, that's okay. That's okay, because I honestly want to rearrange my books I have over here, which if you've seen my room tour video, it's still basically laid out the same way. I just don't have a bookshelf right there which you actually see at the end of every video on my little thumbnail thing. So like that bookshelf is no longer there, but I have my main two and then the three right here in front and then one at my desk. So there you go. And with that, what was I going to say? Oh, okay. So I actually want to give out stats for this because for some reason I think that's fun. So I started this challenge on November 14th, 2019 with 107 books and I asked Suri because she can do that to say what it day is on 107 days and she told me my projected end date was February 29th 2020 and that's because we have a leap year because I was really confused for a moment but that's only if I read a book a day and I, that's not gonna happen from here on out so in this little update video here we are hi uh, we have November 15th to December 8th, which was yesterday. I'm just gonna cancel it out at yesterday. And that's about three and a half weeks, roughly. Roughly. Go with it. So that was 25 books. <sighs> 25 books, but don't be impressed because a lot of those were thin books because I just wanted to get those out of the way. So let's go ahead and discuss. Our stats, here we are. So read 25, but out of those 25, 24 are being given away unhauling and then only one's being kept oh well and then I also decided just to straight like I flipped through them and I'll explain actually I probably should do this as I do it so let's talk about the one book I'm keeping first out of the 25 I read I kept one I feel like that's going to be what everyone would want to know is the ones I'm keeping not the ones I'm unhauling but you know maybe that's just me but for that, am I talking really fast? I'm probably talking really fast, but is is it is it really anything unusual for me? The book I'm keeping out of the 25, the only book in this update of this rereadathon, there you go, that's what we're gonna call this. An update for the rereadathon. There you go. Is Double Take by Melody Carlson. Okay, yes, I know how unrealistic this book probably is, but it was so much fun so much fun basically it's kind of like parent trap minus the parents and an Amish girl and one being a girl from Manhattan just switching places for a week and for some reason I just I still find that interesting when I first read this like back in like 2014 2013 a long time ago 
I gave it five stars. I'm like, well, that's probably a little generous now, Lindsay. But I reread it and I gave it four. So, I mean, it was still really entertaining. I think that's the best way to put it is it's just entertaining. It's probably not the most realistic, but you know, it was fun. So this was our keeper. We have one keeper book. And now for the, so this one can go back on the shelf. Watch, watch, here we go, ready? Yay. Okay, so we're just gonna put it like that because once I read all these books, I'm gonna reorganize my bookshelf. So, you know, just you might want to just get used to uh, missing bookshelves for a moment, for my sake, please. So with that, now with, I don't know what to start with. Let's start with the one I, now let's talk about the 24 I'm unhauling. Let's do that. Okay, I'm going to stand up partially for now. So I'm going to just go ahead and I reread the series and I'm just going to go ahead and unhaul them and pass them along. And that is the London Confidential series by Sandra Bird. We have Asking for Trouble, Through Thick and Thin, Don't Kiss Him Goodbye, and Flirting with Disaster. These were, again, all fun and entertaining, but I don't really see a need to keep them on my personal bookshelf. So we're just, they were good. They're going to be, re they're all going to be reviewed. There you go. So that honestly I think was the only series I finished and then okay then uh, I'm in the middle of three series which is low-key frustrating and stressful but I did it to my own self so we have the miracle girl and eh, things are fine the miracle girl series and I haven't read book four yet but I've just already kind of done a general deciding that I'm just going to go ahead and pass the whole series along. And But what I've read thus far is The Miracle Girls, Breaking Up is Hard to Do, A Little Help from My Friends, and then once I read it this week, Love Will Keep Us Together. I haven't read Love Will Keep Us Together, so i got to keep that one off to the side. But I will go ahead and part with this series. It's interesting, but I don't think I need to keep it on my bookshelf. They're fun. Like if you like Melody Carlson teen drama, I think it's great for that. I think it's really good for that kind of thing, but it's different in the regard of, okay, I, Melody Carlson is what got me started on uh, Christian fiction. These are not by Melody Carlson. This is by Anne Dayton and Mae Vanderbilt. Want to uh, clarify that? So, I've always related to these like in the sense of they're kind of like Melody Carlson books, but Melody Carlson books, which I will be talking about within this wrap up, kind of wrap up, um, Melody Carlson books can sometimes come across as, because they're YA and they have a lot of teen drama and angst and dating relationships and all that kind of stuff, which is great if you like it. And I'm not necessarily opposed to it, but just sometimes I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm good. I'm, I've had my fill. I'm good. Fill. I've had my fill. That's how the phrase goes. But sometimes Melody Carlson books kind of come across as if a mom wrote them. And that's not a bad thing. It's just some of the advice or comments from other teenagers seem very momish. Which, again, not a bad thing, I guess, but I don't get that vibe with the Miracle Girl series. I really don't. And funny enough, though, I read this series, like all four books, I read this series not even four or five years ago. I barely remember book one. Book two and three, those were like brand new books to me. Why? Why is that? That's, that's really strange, in my opinion. And book four, I don't remember any of it, so I'm going to go ahead and read it. I actually read these through Kindle Unlimited because I just, ebooks are sometimes easier for me to read depending on how life is. So, yes, book one's been reviewed, book two will be reviewed shortly, and three and four will come again. So, again, if you want content reviews of any of these books, all the reviews are either up or they will be up very soon. Okay, and on the same kind of lines is Melly Carlson's The Jerk Magnet. This is book one in a trilogy. I have not read book two and three yet. This one was the only one available on Kindle Unlimited, so I just went ahead and read this one. 
And again, I've kind of made the decision once I read the other two books, I'm just going to go ahead and just completely unhaul this series. And that's just because, number one, this isn't really my favorite book or just series by Melody Carlson. And I also really disagree with quite a few comments from the mother figure in this. Well, she's her soon-to-be stepmom. And I just, she had some comments that I'm just like, don't really think I agree with that. I don't agree with that one. So I'm just, I'm just going to finish out the series for reviewing purposes and then they're going to be unhauled. This is where the majority of the 24 unhauling books came from. This is, how many is this? I don't even know. Two, all right, 16. I read 16 of these things. So, I really, they're really heavy. My dog's going crazy for some reason. Yay. But 16 of the Sisters in Time series. What is she barking at? So this is, I read 16 of these. And as I mentioned in the prior video, these really haven't been, I don't want to hold up this one. Which one do I want to hold up? I want to hold up. Where was my favorite? Yes. Okay. This one was my favorite and I'll discuss that in a minute. But I really... One thing I've really noticed with just reading historical fiction in general or learning about history is prior to like the 1880s, even 1850s, like the 1850s with the Civil War, I don't really like reading about it. But after that, say like the 1880s, that, that's where my interest is, is in the 1880s and later, like to the 1910s before the Great War really started is when I like it. So, like, I really enjoy those 30 years of history reading about when it's in a major city. Because, I don't know, the inventions, the outfits, I've just that kind of thing is interesting to me. But when it's in the 1600s, coming off the Mayflower, or the 1700s with the Boston Tea Party, or, the, or you know, just that, the early 1800s, and then the Civil War, I'm not... Like, yes, I completely agree. Those are important historical time periods we need to know about so we do not repeat them later in history. But they just don't interest me as much. Like, when it comes to reading, like, actual history, okay, I can I can do it. I can do it. But, like, when it comes to pl pleasure fiction reading, I'm just like, mm, it's not really my thing. So I really think that's why I struggled the most with this series at the beginning and I'm just dragging my feet to read them. Because the first, what, seven books I read were all from the 1600s to the late 1700s. And I'm just, <sighs> that's just not my thing. It's not my time period. I enjoy everybody's different. But that's, I truly think that's why I struggled so much with the series. And as I've continued, like, I have two books left of the series. I am so disappointed. I wanted to finish these papers fell. I wanted to finish these last two before I had to film this video, but I didn't. So I'll be finishing these tonight. I'm positive. Nearly positive. But yes, so 16 of the 24 books I'm unhauling is the Sisters in Time series. I've just, I've kind of just gone ahead and decided I'm just going to go ahead and unhaul these as well. They're basically Christian American girl books, but with more history covered and Christian content. So, if you like that kind of thing, it's definitely there for you to get. Um, I'm just not interested in all of these time periods, but I do really like how many different time periods are in this series. Like, it's 24 books total. So, it covers a lot of history. One thing I'm going to say real quick is I do wish there was a little more diversity in this series. Like, we have one... Mexican-American girl and then an African-American girl who is a former slave in these books. But there's not really any Asian characters. There's like in the last one I read, Mandy the Outsider. This is set right prior to World War II and she has Japanese-American friends. But, oh, and one of the girls is an immigrant from Germany, her family is. So, I mean, in the historical time context, all of this is. But I'm just, I kind of wish there would have been more diversity in the series. So that's a little disappointing in all honesty because like it would have been interesting to have like about the Chinese Exclusion Act in California or Japanese Americans after Pearl Harbor. Like I feel like that would have given a little more historical depth to these books but 
we didn't have either of those two. Just a little, a little more diversity would have been really nice. But on the topic of that, the one book I think I enjoyed the most out of these books I've read thus far is Rachel and the Riot. And why did I like this one so much? Well, I liked Rachel. And Rachel was such, she was such a good kid. Like if I had a daughter like her, I, I would be great. It would be great. Long time in the future. But just, there's a new girl in her classroom from Sweden and she, and this is set in 1889. So, all the start of the time period I enjoy but it's there's a new girl there's a new girl in her classroom and she doesn't speak any English so Rachel just goes up to her and just becomes her friend and points to like her sandwich and says sandwich and apple and like having her repeat herself and basically helping her immerse herself in the new language of the girl's new country and I just oh, I loved that so much as a foreign language, I'm going to call myself that, as a foreign language learning enthusiast, I just was like, this is great. I just, I loved Rachel. I loved her mindset. So honestly, this book made me kind of question, should I just keep this entire series? Because I want to keep this series together one way or the other. But no, I'm just going to go ahead and share these with someone else. And I did really, I really enjoyed this one though. Like, And then one more I really ended up enjoying was Maureen the detective. This was the age of immigrants in 1903. She was, it's okay, the back cover is a little, um, I feel like it's a little misleading. She was adopted, but she was adopted by the family that her mother was a cook for. So there's that. I enjoyed this one though because it kind of had like a Nancy Drew mystery vibe where like it wasn't true bad guys chasing after you. It was just a good old mystery. So I thought that one was interesting. So those were my two favorites that I read out of these 16. But if we have to talk about my least favorites, I won't because I did have a couple as well that I'm just like grr on for different reasons. But you know this is an interesting series. It's been really interesting just reading these all close together because I'm seeing history go by quickly. And yes, they're fictional, but the events in these books are not. So it's just, it's been interesting. So again, I feel like homeschool moms or younger girls that really like history, like I'm talking young is in, I'd say 9 to 12, maybe 8 to 11 probably would be even then. But the thing is, I do have content warning on two of the books. Again, there's going to be reviews up on all of these. Okay, I had two, but I can't remember what the other one is. I'll put it here because I know I have it. So the content warning will be on this book. And then I'm also going to say Carrie's Courage because it deals with the Ku Klux Klan. I can't pronounce that if I don't look at it. So it deals with that hard topics. Not in a... I wouldn't say it's not in an age appropriate way though. It's just I feel like it probably would be best for younger readers to discuss that with a parent who's read it as well or read it alongside a parent or just a trusted adult. So I mean it really depends on the girl of course though but like if she's sensitive to that. But yes okay so 16 of these books done. Two more to go and I'm just gonna go ahead and unhaul them but there we go. That was the majority of what I've been spending my reading on. Okay, and then also I am unhauling. I kind of decided to just go ahead and unhaul these. So one I DNF'd was If the Shoe Fits by Sandra D. Bricker. I remember enjoying this one back when I first read it in like 2013, I think it was. But I remember enjoying book two more. And I just, I couldn't get into this one for some reason all of a sudden. So, you know, I'm just going to take that as to DNF it. And then I'm going to still give book two a try in the series. Also, with the not rereading, but I skimmed through it, was Beverly Lewis's The Road Home and The Proving. I feel like I recently read these, so I don't really need to reread the books in their entirety. I have other books I enjoyed by this author better, so I'm just going to go ahead and pass these along. Okay, and in the last series I am going to discuss... 
double checking on that as I say those words, is the Hidden Diary series by Sandra Bird. So there's eight books in this series, and I believe I reviewed one, two, three, and possibly four, maybe. Like, I haven't reviewed this entire series. But unfortunately, now looking at this, these are barely over 100 pages, if that. And the, the more current page number count that has to have, that a book has to have to be reviewed on my blog is 122. She's an odd amount, but there's reasons, trust me. So, I can't really reread these to review, and I feel like my reviews of the first books are sufficient, so I'm just gonna go ahead and pass along this series. Oh, this is kind of all of them, but kind of also not. So, yep, yeah, there we go. There is my update for the uh, rereading first update. Yep, there we go. I don't know what to call this. The Rereadathon Keeper and Hall update number one. There we go. There's the official name of what I'm doing today. That was 25 books, but then I'm going ahead and unhauling, what was it? 13, 11, something like that? 11. I'm going ahead and unhauling 11, and then I'll have three more to join. So basically we're, including those three I need to read, I have 72 books left. Ah, so I'll update about those probably in the next update video, which I don't know when that's coming, because my main deal is I really just wanted to get the Sisters in Time series done right now, like that was like a high priority. And then the rest I'm just gonna do when time allows. Because speaking of foreign languages or earlier, I am st trying to study for the test of proficiency in Korean and I'm registering soon for the test and then the test is in April. So yes, I totally could get all these done before the test happens, but I need to really study before this test. There's six levels in case anyone was interesting. I'm going for level three. I'd love to get level four, but I don't think that's going to happen. So I'm going for level three, which is like beginner intermediate and then upper intermediate is four. So I have things to study and learning vocabulary. And I also have to write an essay in Korean within the allotted time, which just sounds, wow, I'm really excited about that. Also nervous, but really excited. So that is where the majority of my focus is going to go. Like I can read these books anytime, but I've got like a set date. I have to take this exam. So I just, I want to give my all to the exam. So these updates are now going to be very sporadic. I do want to try to get like a couple books done a week just to try to put my bookshelf back in order because it kind of looks crazy but you know that's just how it's going to be for a little bit while I study for the test. I'm so excited about it. Like I'm nervous but I'm also so giddy about all the information I'm going to learn in preparation for the test which makes me sound like a nerd but maybe I am for Korean because I love the Korean language so much. I have ordered so many books for that. So I have to completely rework these bookshelves just to fit these bookshelves down here. Not these, but the bookshelves over here, I have to rework to fit them all because I ordered like 20 books. Oops. Actually, I ordered more, but then some of them canceled or I found a better deal elsewhere. So currently have 20 books on their way to me. Oops. <laughs> but I'm so excited because technically you don't need a book to take the topic. Like there's not a single book. You just have to study, and I study the best with books. So, I ordered lots of books. I'm so excited though. Like, I, I th it feels like Christmas. Well, I mean, Christmas is coming up, but it feels like Christmas, like, because all these books are coming in. I'm so excited. So, that's enough rambling for today. There is my update on my re readathon Keeper on Hall update one, and I will see y'all some other day with a second update, with hopefully more red. There we go. I think I discussed everything I needed to in this video. And with that, I will see you all next time. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Lindsay from the blog booksforchristiangirls.blogspot.com where in 2019 and 2020 there's a new review every Friday. I have a try. I try to post a new video on this channel every other Thursday. And I'm on Instagram somewhat randomly, but I'm trying to do better. So with that, I'll see you all next time. Have a lovely day!